Thank you, Nancy. And that's funny. I never actually realized we had a, a full Columbus panel. No offense to my Cleveland uh, folks here. Um, so our first panelist is going to be Julie Graber, who is a senior associate at Ohio State University at the Institute on Women, Women Gender, and Public Policy. Um, Julie joined the staff at Ohio State University in 2006 to lead the development and operations of the Institute, which is a new research center um, focused on improving the lives of the 5.8 million women and girls in Ohio. Um, we are going to ask our panelists to try and keep it to no more than seven minutes. So thank you very much and welcome Julie. Thanks, Terry. I had the opportunity last week at Women's Equality Day at a celebration at the State House to do an update on the status of women in the state of Ohio. And um, it went really well. We got a good pickup on it in the media. Um, the Dispatch wrote a really nice article. That's our um, daily paper. It's up there on the board back there. Um, but when I called a colleague the next day, she must have seen the caller ID on the phone because she picked it up and said, hello, bearer of bad news. <laughs> and unfortunately, there weren't a lot of numbers that we reported that were good news for women and girls in Ohio. And I want to share just some of the economic uh, numbers that we um, focused on. We had actually talked about four different issues, and they're all interrelated. Um, the economic status of women, educational attainment for women here in Ohio, uh, health behaviors, um, health risks here in Ohio for women, and also our involvement in political leadership. And I'll touch on a few of those, but I want to focus primarily on the economic issues. Now, Terry mentioned the USA Today paper this morning. I walked out of my hotel room and saw it too. And I thought to myself, if they don't stop writing about this stuff like it's good news, um, it's just going to drive me nuts. Because it leaves out so many things. It, it, it creates this impression, as you indicated, Nancy, that things are going well for women. And that is not the case. It also clouds the picture in terms of looking at some of the ways that this particular economic recession is impacting women very specifically. Now, I want to just mention, first of all, that the numbers that they are focusing on are um, employment statistics that come from payroll data. So it is the, the part of the workforce, the labor force, um, that is paid on payroll, the statistics uh, reported by their employers. It does not include agricultural workers. It does not include the self-employed. So when Nancy indicated, you know, that women make up about 56 or 46, 47 percent, maybe 48 percent, that's based on household data, and that's the more traditional number that we've looked at. For some reason, these payroll numbers have caught people's attention. And we're also seeing a pattern with the percentage of women in payroll jobs increasing that's typical of a recession. We see this kind of closing of the gap between men and women uh, with an economic downturn because of the fact that women work in lower paid jobs, typically part-time jobs, jobs that do not have health insurance benefits along with them. Um, it's not atypical for us to see this pattern. And um, most well, I won't say most. There are a significant number of economists who don't think that we'll close that gap and women will actually become 50 percent of the workforce for any significant period of time. And when you look at the fact that women have been over 40 percent of the workforce since the early 1980s and in the range of 46, 47 percent for the last 10 years, I'm not clear about how things are going to change if women would happen to obtain that 50 percent margin. I don't I uh, had a colleague call me and say, well, isn't it great, you know, employers would be really looking for ways to um, attract and retain women. And I said, well, you know, they haven't been doing it when we've been 47, 48 percent of the workforce, so I'm not really sure what changes will happen if we just happen to be 50 percent. But having said that, I want to share a couple of, um, and these are national numbers, a couple of ways that um, the economy is impacting some women very specifically. One of the most um, uh, troubling things for me has been the rate of unemployment among female-headed households nationally. That number has skyrocketed, and it's gone up nearly a percentage point each of the last three months. It's gone from 11 percent to 11.7 percent to 12.6 percent. Last month was nearly a whole percentage point. Um, and 
I mean, meant to look about a year ago. I think it's like a 50% increase or more over where we were about a year ago uh, for um, female-headed households. Uh, in addition, um, and here in Ohio, 52% of the female-headed households with children under the age of five, 52% of those households live in poverty. And I, only, I expect that number to just be exacerbated by the current economic situation. And the labor force participation rate, again nationally, for women age 65 and over is more than 13%. And that's the highest it's been since the Labor Department started calculating statistics in 1948. And the unemployment rate among women of this age is higher, actually higher than it is for men of the same category. Older women are entering the workforce or going back into the workforce, um, in some cases after not working for as many as 20 years. And they're facing a work environment that's very different than the one that they may have worked in previously. I mean, just think about the way, our, the way we work has changed in the last 20 years. Um, I have a colleague who works for an organization in uh, Central Ohio that does career counseling primarily for women. Um, their oldest client right now is a woman who's over 80, who's looking for help in finding a job because she's lost pension benefits, she's lost health insurance benefits uh, with this particular decline. And they're really being challenged by how do they help women who are in this age bracket prepare for going into the workforce. The women are scared. They don't think they'll be able to find a job or a, a job that has benefits or that they'll be able to uh, afford the benefits. They're also very um, concerned about walking into work environments where there's a tremendous amount of technology that they're not really comfortable with. And they actually feel like they'll be ridiculed by some of the younger employees because of what they don't know about using computers. For women here in Ohio, we make up nearly 48% of the workforce and we hold 33.5% of managerial positions. Yet the gender wage gap here in Ohio is 73 cents to the dollar, um, ranking Ohio 35th among the states and Washington, D.C. for our gender wage gap, and lower than the national average that Nancy mentioned of 78 to 80 uh, cents to the dollar. Of the 285,000 Ohioans who actually earn six figures, only 18% are women here in Ohio. And if you look at it a different way, of all of the women who work, only 2% of women in the state earn six figures compared to men, 7% uh, of men in the state who earn six, seven figures, or 7% that earn six figures. Only one Fortune 500 company that's headquartered in, in Ohio has ever had a female CEO when Carrie Anderson served as the CEO of Wendy's. And only five of the largest privately held firms out of the top 200 uh, were headed by women when we took a look at it uh, about a year, year and a half ago. So women here in the state um, clearly have some economic challenges um, uh, here and um, nationally that I'm sure we're seeing a microcosm of here in the state of Ohio. I want to touch on one other thing because it's so critically related to economic status, and that's um, the educational attainment of women in the state of Ohio. Um, it's one of the major drivers, getting a college education. Here in Ohio, about 78% of girls um, graduate from high school, but if you look at that same uh, age cohort in the next couple of years, uh, for both girls and boys, only 34% are enrolled in some type of college program. Here in Ohio, only 23% of women age, five, or age 25 and older, 23%, have four or more years of college. And that ranks Ohio 39th among the 50 states in D.C. for the percentage of women holding a college degree. Uh, among African American women, the rate is 14.3%, and if you're a woman living in Appalachian, Ohio, uh, it's 12 to 14%. So if you look at pockets in the state, it's even more challenging. Educational um, attainment is critical. It takes four or more years of college in Ohio to increase women's median earnings to the level that exceeds the median earnings of men with a high school diploma. Women have to have four or more years of college to have median earnings potential of um, more than men with a high school diploma. 